Good morning. I take this opportunity to welcome you all for the seminar on recent trends and changes in accounting, finance, and economics, and their impact on the economy in the post-globalization. I especially would like to welcome all the students, staff, and faculty of School of Business, the presenters, Mr. Kasala Kamara and Mr. Anthony Pepper. They would be introduced in detail at an appropriate time. I also want to take this honor of welcoming Dr. Trevor Gardner, the president of the University of Southern Caribbean, who is a visionary and who has contributed and contributing a lot for the growth and the development of the university. I also recognize there are some guests among us. Uh, I want to just uh, acknowledge Dr. Noel. Uh, he is there in our presence. So we want to welcome you and Mr. Vijay Paul and other friends of the community. We also would like to welcome you and feel uh, at home as we uh, in this seminar and we are going to proceed very shortly. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this seminar is an important aspect of our daily lives either at an individual or at a corporate level. We all, we are all, one way or the other, affected by the changes and developments in the economy, financial and the accounting systems. First, let me give you the meaning of concept of post-globalization. The maker of post-Cold War American foreign policy believed that by fostering globalization, the growth of both the U.S and the world economy would be increased. Globalization was not a new, wholly new phenomenon, but it did aim attain unprecedented prominence in the public disclosure during 1990s. Indeed, one of its chief articulators, the journalist Thomas L. Friedman, suggested that the post-Cold War world will be dubbed the age of globalization. Although difficult to define precisely, scholars and policymakers appear to understand globalization as the integration of markets, finance and technologies in a way that span space and time. Some observers even predicted that the ultimate consequences of this process would be the elimination of all national borders and thus the nation state. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just introduce the recent changes and trends in the economics and finance. As you are all aware, the genesis of the current global economic crisis has been traced to the collapse of the uh, subprime mortgage market which started between 2002 and 2006. This was when lending to the household sector in the United States of America was growing at a rate far beyond that of the broad, broader economy, that is the growth in gross domestic product. The rising delinquencies in the sub-mortgage market triggered turbulences in the prime mortgage backed securities market leading to a financial crisis which quickly spread to other developing and developed economies. Subsequently, the financial crisis created a recessionary economic environment which global trade, stock market indices, commodity prices de declined significantly. The financial and economic crisis thus negatively affected on economies around the world by adversely affecting trade and investment flows and price of key export commodities. To respond to this crisis, several actions has been taken at a global level by the major economies to address the root causes and the effects of the global financial and economic, economic crisis. These are fiscal and monetary policy stimulus measures aimed at boosting, boosting sorry, global consumption and investment demand in an effort to avoid significantly sharper global contraction 
than which was already occurred. Measures typically entail reduction of interest rates, tax cuts, and increased government spending in the form of bailouts of strategic institutions, and in some cases, virtually nationalization. Concrete steps also have been taken to reform the regulatory and supervisory frameworks governing the financial sector. Further, increased resources has been provided to key multilateral institutions such as IMF and the World Bank. These institutions have been mandated to play a central role in leading the global response to the crisis and the evaluation the efficacy of the various measures that we implemented. Therefore, the presenters today, this morning, will focus on the nature of global economic and financial system, policies and institutional trends, recent and current developments, implications for the Caribbean and final risk and returns. Further, it is also important to see the trends and changes in accounting at a corporate level because it will affect the organization, profitability and its financial position. Therefore, one has to carefully examine the changes in the international accounting standards. Parties involved such as American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, Security Exchange Council, uh, General Accepted Accounting Principle Organizations and FASB Financial Accounting Standard Boards uh, in setting the accounting standards okay, and pronouncements. And further, one should have clear understanding about the principles, assumptions and constraints of accounting. So ladies and gentlemen, this morning I would like to welcome for the uh, seminar. And uh, in this seminar, the presenters will focus on all these three aspects. Now I would like to invite